Right before we jump into this video, if you'd like to take better pictures in only 11 days, I created a free mini video course that you can download for free right now at fronosphoto.com slash 11 days. Now let's get to the video. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and welcome to the Frodo store for an unboxing, sniff test, and mini review of this Tamron 100 to 400, 4.5 to 6.3 VC lens that clocks in at 799 bucks. Let's open it up and see what is inside. First things first, we have our serial number, which is good to input into my gear vault, mygearvault.com slash download. Go ahead and do that. So we have some paperwork, which you'll never read, a piece of cardboard, which you will never need, and then we get to the lens itself. So come on, lens itself. Let's get out of the box. All right. So I had the opportunity to take this lens out into the real world to take it to the zoo. I also did some sample photos of a brick wall so that you could see how it looks at the wide angle as well as how sharp it is when you're zoomed all the way in. And you can download all of those raw files and see for yourself whether you like the results that you would get. So I expected it to be a little heavier, but it does have a nice feel to it. Back here, you have a nice metal mount. On some of the lenses, the lower end ones, you find a plastic mount, so it's nice to have a metal one. Now, you won't see a tripod collar on this. I'm pretty sure you could buy one separately, but I don't think you really need one for this. This isn't a type of lens that I'm gonna put on a monopod. You've got a lens hood right here. I always leave the lens hood on when I'm shooting. It's great for cutting down on any stray light that may come in from anywhere, which means you're gonna get more contrasty images because when you get that front haloing thing, you start to get more glowy McGloerson images, which I personally don't like. It also helps protect the lens a little bit if you're gonna bounce it off of something by accident. So let's look at the zoom range. Look at this. Yep, you're gonna have to be careful if you're shooting up against glass or a window or something and you start zooming in, you're gonna end up hitting it because the lens extends this far. But this is a 100 to 400, it's variable aperture. You're gonna go from 4.5 to 6.3, which means as you zoom in, you're cutting back on the amount of light that you're letting in. So when I was shooting the gorillas indoors, it became a little more difficult because I had to bump my ISO up way high, which is gonna to lead to more noise and grain in the images. You just have to have a better understanding for how your exposure works if you're gonna take this indoors. It can work in there, but it's also gonna lead to possibilities of having more people in focus in the background that may be a distraction. So there's like an image where there's the gorilla and then there's a girl that's sort of out of focus but you can see what she's doing. That's what happens if you're not shooting with a 2.8 but again, this is 799 bucks, and a 2.8 in a 400 millimeter range is gonna be in the six to $7,000 range, and that's of course not for most people. This lens is a full frame lens, meaning you put it on your full frame camera, but it will also work on a crop sensor camera where you will get more bang for your buck in terms of 35 millimeter zoom equivalent. On a Nikon, you multiply it by 1.5, and I believe you get a 150 to 600 millimeter equivalent and on a Canon, you get 160 to 640 millimeter equivalent. Now this lens has VC for vibration compensation. That is something that I would leave on. It has two stops of that. It's got off, then it's got number two, and it's got VC mode number one, which is where I tend to leave it. That's gonna counteract any motion that you have or when you're shooting in lower light situations, if you wanna keep that ISO down a little bit, it's gonna counteract any shake that you may have. Now, I was pretty surprised at how sharp this lens was. When I took photos through a fence of the bald eagle, you could see how sharp the eyeball was and look at the feathers around its neck. That's pretty amazing to shoot through the fence like that, blow that out of focus and get a super sharp image of the bald eagle. I got some really nice results shooting the lion as well. Now, now this is a good lens for outdoors. Like I said, as you go indoors, it's gonna be harder with that F6.3, but outdoors, you're gonna get some nice range on full frame as well as crop sensors. So it's gonna be good for nature, it's gonna be good for birding, it's not too heavy to carry around with you if you're gonna take a hike into the woods to photograph those animals. It's gonna be nice for many different 
different situations, but there's always that trade-off. It's variable aperture. Nikon, on the other hand, makes a 200 to 500 millimeter that's a fixed 5.6, but it's 1400 bucks. Is it worth it? For most people, probably not. You're better off staying with a 100 to 400 like this and saving the money and putting the extra cash into something else or just saving up for future lenses. On the other hand, if you're gonna try and shoot indoor sports, say for your kids, because a lot of people wanna shoot indoor basketball or volleyball, this is not the lens to use. It's too big and it's too slow in terms of aperture. That's where you'd wanna check out something like the Tamron 70-200 G2, which is a 2.8 lens, which we've done a real world review on, so you can click down below to check that out as well. Also, while I was at the zoo, I photographed some birds that were hanging around from the peacocks to the other colorful birds to this bird that was just sitting on a post and the eyeball looks sharper than I expected and that's indoors handheld with the VC on. So this lens works pretty well for, for the value that it offers. Now I know that 800 bucks may seem like a lot, but for that, you're getting a big zoom range, you're getting the vibration compensation, and you're getting the ability to reach out and grab images at a distance. Now the big test is, how does it smell? Oh yeah, like a Goodyear tire. Maybe that's, maybe it's a Pirelli. That's because I'm sniffing the rubber. But wind tunnel test, let's see. The wind tunnel test is a little tough. It didn't really pass that one too well because of how much girth and, and, and width it has. But at the end of the day, this is a nice option to go with. Yes, 800 bucks is a good amount of money, but if you're looking to reach out and grab those images and you don't want to spend a ton more money, like in the two, $3,000 range, this may be a great option for you to look at. The color, the tones, the clarity, the sharpness. I was happy with what I saw. There's always little imperfections, and that's why I give you the raw files so you can download and determine if they're right for you. So is this a lens that might be right for you? If so, leave me a comment down below. If it's not, let me know why not. And that's it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share, and check out other videos like this where there's unboxings and sniff tests. You can click up on the screen as soon as I'm done doing this outro. And there it is, Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.